So, um, so today I'm going to show you what the founder of Sabbatical Beauty actually uses. And a little bit of background about me in case you don't know who I am. My name is Adeline Ko. I'm originally from Singapore. I went to graduate school in the US. I went to Michigan. I got my PhD in comparative literature and then I got a job and I got tenure and then I decided I really hated academia and so I quit after I started Sabbatical Beauty because it became viable enough for me to run my own business with it. So um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my skincare journey and what led me to found Sabbatical Beauty and also the, the products I'm using and why I use them and how they move, um, how my routine has changed as time has gone on. So first of all, uh, I'm 38 years old and uh, I was never a beauty product person my entire life. I really actually was very suspicious of beauty product companies. I always thought they were trying to scam me and take my money and I was always just completely overwhelmed and just thought nothing would work. When I started my first year at my tenure track position, I had, was so stressed out. My face was so full of acne and nothing was curing it. So I went to see a dermatologist and the dermatologist said to me that you are allergic to all moisturizers, so you should never use any moisturizer again. And so I was moving from tropical Singapore to to Philadelphia where there's actually winter and snow and so for something like four years I suffered with no moisturizer in the winter my face just kept looking more and more haggard my acne subsided but was still there didn't really go away so uh, my skin basically sucked my life kind of my, my face kind of sucked for like a long time <laughs> because nothing worked for me and I was I was too cheap and I didn't know enough to really want to like buy anything or invest money in anything and plus the dermatologist really told me that no no moisturizers for you right so so that's what I so I didn't do anything so what happened uh, the year before I started sabbatical was that I read about Korean beauty and I read about how Korean beauty uh, was it has extensive regimen, 10-step regimen, and how it was a lot more gentle than um, regular, I would say, Western beauty. And, and it was all about a concept of layering and being very gentle and pampering rather than like drying the F out of your skin, which is what a lot of Western beauty products are about. So I decided to give it a try, and so I jumped in head first and I bought all these Korean beauty products and I got really addicted to them. I really liked them. My skin improved a lot, but it didn't improve like until the point where I wasn't bothered about my skin. I didn't need to think about it every day. So um, part of the Korean beauty uh, group in the US, the fandoms in the US, is to do a lot of research on ingredients. So I started doing a lot of research on ingredients and a formulation of products. And then I realized that the only way for me to really know what was in my skincare was to make it myself. And that's just because I, a majority of products will tell you that, oh, it's got this active ingredient in it, like it's got honey in it, and honey is really good for your skin. And if you look at the back of the ingredient label, you see that honey will be like the fifth to last ingredient, meaning there's hardly any honey in it, and it doesn't really make any impact on your skin. So the only way to really control that, I figured, was to make it myself. And I was going on sabbatical. And when I went on sabbatical, I was like, okay, I'm supposed to be writing my book. Maybe I should try doing some DIY skincare on my own as a reward for you know completing certain sections of writing. And my friend Dorothy Kim was also really into Korean beauty and really just was like, you should do this so I don't need to make my own skincare. And that's kind of how sabbatical beauty starts. I with me making my own stuff, experimenting with my own stuff, people really liking it, Dorothy demanding that I make it for her, and my other friends demanding that I make it for them because they saw the changes in my skin just with my own product. And they said they wanted it, and then they told me they wanted to me to make a shop, and then I made a shop, and then I got good coverage in Slate and other places, and it just kind of exploded from there. 
So that's the story of sabbatical beauty. So now let me tell you a little bit about my skin. So since I became an adult, I my skin's pretty dry and sensitive. Um, it was I have my dad's rosacea, and I flush and I get red easily, especially when I'm angry, which is when I was an academic, I was angry a lot. <laughs> so my, I would get red really easy. Um, put me out in the cold, and I get red really easy. So I get have rosacea, I have really sensitive skin, and very dry. Um, so that's kind of my general skin type, and. I would just use to like the majority of products I'll put on my skin. I'll have a I'll have an allergic reaction to. It just would not like my it would, my skin would get red. It would get annoyed. So that was my skin type when before I started Sabaco Beauty. And after I started Sabaco Beauty and experimented with the products, my skin just kind of in in like I would say five months, six months, just kind of calmed down. And now I would say, I mean, I have dry skin. But I don't think I have really sensitive skin anymore. It, everything, you know, all the really good stuff that I put in the products just kind of works out. So it doesn't actually annoy my skin, and my skin is a lot more tolerant of things that it wouldn't have been before I started Sabaco Beauty products. So I'm going to tell you um, a little bit about like um, what I used to have, and what I used to use was. Everything. So when I started Sabaco Beauty, when I was into Korean beauty, I wanted to try every single thing. But after a while, after doing Sabaco Beauty and finding out what products work for me, I actually don't have a very huge collection of products. I actually have quite a streamlined amount of products. And don't think that's because I haven't tried everything. I mean, I make everything, right? So the first person that's tried on is me. So I know whether a product works for me or not, and I know whether I'm going to put it in my go-tos or not. So this is this is what's on my beauty shelfie right now, and I'm going to like turn it over just a little bit so you can see, and then I'm going to tell you about each thing that's. In so first of all, I'm gonna go from the start with cleansing. So <clears throat> my go-to product is I think a lot of you guys' go-to product, vacuum cleaner cleansing oil. It gets out all the clogs that nothing else has been able to get out. It gets out all these pimples that are about to get into formation. <laughs> um absolutely love my vacuum cleaner oil. That's what I use as my first cleanse. And in fact, and because I have dry skin and Except for maybe like once in two weeks, I actually only use vacuum cleaner as my single cleanse because I don't wear makeup, so I don't think I need to take a lot off of my skin. So I just really use um, vacuum cleaner to take out the impurities, and that's all I use for most of my skin, most of the most of the time. And I will use the second cleanse, um, and my second cleanse is hardly used, as you can see. This is the tester. <laughs> this is the tester of the cucumber mint cleanser and you see it's it's like it's still I still have it because I use it so infrequently I would say I may use, basically use it like once in two weeks once in three weeks and I only need a little bit of it so that's what I use for my cleansing then the next step is my favorite serum which is Dorian Gray serum and yep this is my go-to serum this is actually the only serum that I use and I'm actually using a customer return because the customer didn't like it for some reason and it was a totally fine product so if you wonder what happens to your returns that you don't use well we use them I use them <laughs> the elves use them etc so I use the Dorian Gray serum that's my serum of choice and then I use the Dorian Gray beauty oil next and Sometimes I cut out the beauty oil in the summer with, to go with less layers when my when my when it's really hot humid outside and I need less layers. And then I use donkey cream as my day and night moisturizer. And since it's getting to be winter, I have sake and rice, which is my favorite sleeping pack. And as you know, sake and rice is the last layer that you put on before you go to sleep and you wash it off in the morning. And other than that, I also have that was a little bot, little jar that you couldn't really make up, camel milk and yeast mask. And I only have a very tiny bottle because I only use camel milk and yeast mask during the time of the month when I get hormonal acne. And I just have a little bit of it just to dot on those dots when it comes. 
for my more regular masking, I use blueberry and cream mask, and that's because it's super hydrating and my skin is dry. And also, since it's keep getting cold, I also am using the Unicorn Dreams Lip Scrub, which is a lot of you have been complaining about getting flaky skin around your mouth and edges around your mouth, but Unicorn Dreams is really great for that. Uh, it will exfoliate all the old gunky stuff and it will make your skin, your, your, your lips look nice and hydrated. And my body wash of choice is Cabin Fever. So I do guess Kate Day Spa, I think Kate Guess Day Spa, which is sometimes I take Day Spa, but I think that Cabin Fever is actually my favorite. <clears throat> and finally, the last thing that I have, which is not sabbatical beauty, is sunscreen. Now, Sabbatical Beauty doesn't make sunscreen because we are a small handmade company and you can't really make sunscreen safely by hand because you really need um, an expensive machine to distribute all the zinc oxide or all the sunscreen ingredients regularly into uh, suspend them all so that they are equally in every drop of the formulation. You need a machine to do that. We don't have a machine. So because of that, we, I decided not to make sunscreen. And if any of you are thinking about buying handmade sunscreen, don't because it's not worth it. It's not worth it to um, get sunburn and, and get skin cancer and damage because you're using handmade sunscreen that hasn't been spun by a machine. So my sunscreen of choice is this Bure UV sunscreen, which is really cheap. I get it for under $10 from Amazon. I buy a whole bunch of it once from Japan. I really like it because I... Um, because it's, it doesn't feel like sunscreen, it feels like a lotion, it has no white cast, there's no smell, it's not sticky, and that's why I really like. So, uh, there are some other things that I do keep in my, my bigger stash that I don't use a lot, but I just decided to show you my go-tos, and these are my go-tos. So it was vacuum cleaner, and then during gray serum. Daring Grey Beauty Oil, and Donkey Cream, and Sake and Rice, and Camel Milk and Yeast for that time of the month, Blueberry and Cream for when it's when I'm feeling especially dry, knee perk up, Cabin Fever for my showers. Oh, and I forgot. Lily and Gold too. So Lily and Gold is coming out in a holiday luxury box. The next restock is Friday. It's the first chance to get it. It has real 24 karat gold in it to make you super glowy, blingy, and give you amazing anti-aging effects. So that's my go-to right now also that I'm loving. And um, if you don't want to buy the holiday luxury box, I think that we will be launching it next month in November. Yeah, so that's it. That's kind of what I use. So, you guys have any questions for me? I'm not sure if I'm actually even able to see them because it doesn't seem like I'm, there are no comments or anything other than Amy since I've been live, which is kind of strange. So I'm just going to wait a little bit, see if there's anything. I'm sure when I finish, I'm going to see a ton of comments, and then I'll be like, why didn't Facebook show them to me? But Facebook's not showing me anything, unfortunately. I'm sorry. Oh, Barbara, so you said you missed my discussion about vacuum cleaner. I use it every day. I use it twice a day. And if I need a quick cleanse, I use beauty water, and I didn't bring it here because the label's kind of worn, so you can't even tell that it's beauty water. Sounds great, Barbara. Great. I'm glad that you could be here. Okay, so if there are no more questions, I was really glad to be able to hang out with you guys tonight. And um, thanks for watching. And if you like this video, please like the video. And I will see you guys soon on Facebook. Bye.